have some kind of constants, I guess, for atmospheric pressure, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, when we talk about atmospheric pressure, it's an envelope of gas that is extending outward from the surface of any planet. Although gas molecules have very little mass, gravity, okay, and it keeps them near the surface. All right. Atmospheric pressure can be described as the force that that column of air exerts on the Earth's surface at the bottom of that column. Each layer of atmosphere exerts press force on the layer below, et cetera, et cetera. Let me draw you a diagram here. We'll go through this. Um, if you want to draw one too, you can. It's up to you, okay? Or make a little notes as you go along here. But we're talking about, you know, here I'm standing here. There's a, a there's a column of air above me, okay? That's as, every layer exerts a pressure on the one below it. So what happens is where I'm standing right now, there's a lot of oxygen molecules around me right now. I'm breathing okay so far, so far. Um, I'm breathing okay right now, right? Uh, because there's a lot of oxygen molecules around me. In fact, here's me uh, standing. On Earth, yes, right? You didn't know? Okay, does that make it better? Do you want me to make it blue and green? Yes. No. Okay, so there's me standing on Earth, okay? And, you know, above me is this column of, let's say, oxygen air, okay? So there's a column of gases that extend above me. And at the top of this column, the gas molecules are pretty spread out for two reasons. Okay? First of all, gravity is not as much up there. Okay? Uh, we have less gravity, so they're not bringing all the molecules closer to, to me at the bottom here. So they're a little bit more spread out. And as we get closer and closer towards me, okay, they start to get packed together a little bit better. And eventually when they get to around me here, I got lots of oxygen around me here, yes? Okay. One, due to gravity. Two, the other thing it says is each layer of air molecules exerts on the uh, force on the layer below it, which exerts a force on the layer below that, which exerts a force on the layer below that. So when you're standing at the bottom, you got lots of force on these molecules. Okay. So look, right here, there's two molecules there. Well, those two molecules exert a force on everything below it, but let's just kind of break this into sections. Those two uh, uh, force uh, put a force on these two here, okay? Now I think, what about if I get down to here? Well, now these two exert on here, these two exert on here, so technically I got four molecules exerting on these two down here, yes? And then six exert on those there. And then I got, well, I don't know, like 11 that exert down here. And you see that the molecules are stacking on top of each other, and each one is pushing down on the one below it. So at the bottom, you'd expect the more, most force, the most layers to exert on the bottom, yes? And you keep going here, and every layer exerts a pressure on the two layers above it, right? Or the layers above it, I should say. And we keep pushing down on each one of those. So this one exerts there. Those two exert on there, those ones exert on there, then we go to that one, and then that one, and all that exerts on that down there. Okay? So that's why they're all packed together at the nicely at the bottom. Yep. Well, that's, that's, we're not going to get into weights and stuff like that. We're just talking about the molecules. Okay? Um, then I'm going to go for a climb. Oh, no, I shouldn't have said that, because that ruins it. Um, sorry. Ignore that. Don't, I didn't say that. Oh, that's, part of the, that's part of the gig here. This is all I got, really. I don't have a lot for this unit. But don't, don't say anything. Okay, so once again, here's me. Well, let's call him Johnny. Johnny, sure, why not? We don't have any Johnnies here. Johnny's standing there, and he's got some air above him, right? And he, once again, these are kind of spread out here due to, you know, gravity and whatnot. And then they start to get packed 
a little bit closer together and closer and closer and closer and closer and closer and he's got lots down there yeah no it's air don't ruin it okay trust me it's air air is red now um, so he's got all these layers that stack on top of them right and they force all they pack them all together nicely down here for us and we'll talk about sea level and stuff like that eventually here then Johnny decides hey I want to go for a climb right so he decides he's gonna climb what's this why is it a mountain no because it says M uh -huh. see what I did there that's an M so it's mountain so we go he goes for a climb uh, Johnny's Johnny's so let's put him here don't even start <laughs> He's kind of sad now because he's tired, right? Um, because it takes a lot of work to... <laughs> Are we really going to debate this? No. Okay, just leave me alone, okay? Oh, seriously. Yeah, okay, I can not draw. I get it, okay? I resorted to that fact a while ago. It's fine. Okay, so once again, Johnny still has air that extends above. I thought that was lightning out there. Um, Johnny still has air that ha is above him, but look where he is now. And compare. Let's kind of compare these two guys here. Now, I kind of I was a little bit silly here. I kind of went out of the way, but let's you know think about it. A column of air above him. Let's kind of transfer this over. Look at how many uh, Johnny here. Right. Um, how, those aren't earrings, by the way. Those are air. Um, look, what happens when you get to the top, guys? You're tired, right? Obviously. But think about it. When you climb, I, I went for, oh, I'll tell you later. Uh, when you get to the top, is it easy to breathe? No, it's usually harder, yes. You have to work harder, you know, you're like, <sighs> Well, I, it, I am, okay, because I'm not really in shape. Well, this is a shape, but it's not a good one, apparently. Um, <laughs> but you, um, there's lots of shapes, okay. Um, regardless, though, you know, you get, you're at the top of the hill or top of the mountain, it's harder to breathe, yes? Why? Well, you, you know, you can talk about altitude and all this other stuff, but why? It's because the molecules aren't packed as closely together, right? Look down here. Johnny's got lots of molecules to breathe of oxygen. No problem. Johnny gets to the top. He's got still molecules to breathe. He's not going to die, right? But at the same time, he's got, they're less packed together. So every time he takes a breath, he doesn't get as many oxygen. What are you doing? He doesn't get as many oxygen, uh, he doesn't get as many oxygen atoms, right? To process. So you have to take, you know, deeper breaths. <gasps> like that, right? To get enough oxygen, right? So that's kind of the difference here and that's what we're going to talk about what is the pressure difference here we could talk about the the atmospheric pressure around Johnny Johnny down here would have high pressure yeah lots of pressure so all this is exerting down here he's got lots of molecules to breathe we'd say the atmospheric pressure down here is probably pretty good in fact there's a number for it It's called one atmosphere and then he climbs the mountain and he'd have less than a, probably an atmosphere of pressure around him he'd probably have you know, maybe 0.74 or 75 or maybe 0.90, okay? So he's going to have less pressure around him. There's less exertion on all the molecules. He has less atmospheric pressure around him, which means basically the molecules aren't packed together as tight, so it's harder to breathe. You think about hockey and football and things like that, right? You watch Denver uh, Broncos play, watch their next game, you'll see some guys on the sideline, they'll be taking oxygen, yes, because Denver is high and out there it's the mile high city yes that's what they call it yes and it's harder to breathe so you get the guys that come off the field and they're like oh my goodness I'm out of oxygen so they grab their oxygen mask and they put it over their face and they're like <gasps> and they're trying to get back to where they were before right trying to get enough oxygen in to get their muscles kind of back to work in order kind of thing right Colorado is avalanche my favorite team by the way uh, is uh, you know hard place to play hockey in because it's so high, right? 
Think about where's the easiest place to play hockey, probably. Probably where? Yeah, Vancouver, probably be a good place to play. Boston, probably be okay, right? Sea level. Um, those places are probably easier to play hockey or football, for that matter, because you're at sea level. All the molecules are packed around you, okay? So you're going to get more oxygen for every breath that you take, all right? So that's a little bit about atmospheric pressure. I had to climb a mountain once because I went on a date with a girl I know. True story. That's not making this one up. She wanted to go on a hike. I don't need it. Um, once again, these kind of just kind of go back to that. Because the weight of the entire column exerts uh, force on the bottom layer, it's compressed the most, right? So you look at little Johnny here, right? The weight of all this forces all that stuff to be compressed, okay? As altitude increases, the amount of air above that level becomes smaller. Therefore, it exerts a smaller force. So you look back to Johnny here. You know, he's up here, for example. You don't have much air around you. There's less layers to compact it, right? Um, higher, layers, higher layers of air are compressed less than the lower ones, of course. There's less force above it, forcing it down, okay? So that's just a little bit about atmospheric pressure. We can actually measure atmospheric pressure, and they do this on the, all the time on the news, the weather. 101.325 kilopascals and dropping, or 101.2 and rising. Okay, and that tells you what kind of weather we're going to have, whether rain's coming into the system or, or if it's going to be nice and sunny, for example. Uh, all those things are indicators of that. So we look at pressure and temperature conversions. Well, geez. When he says 100 kilopascals, you know, is there another way to represent that? Can we talk about atmospheric pressure? Can we talk about millimeters of mercury? Can we talk about PSI? Hey, PSI, where have you heard PSI before? Mythbusters, sure. Car tires, right? Bicycle tires, yeah? Yes, right? You know, nowadays, hey, by the way, Nowadays, you don't talk about PSI, right? Because we're in Canada. What do we talk about? When you push the little buttons on the dash of the car, if you got a Ferrari, actually, probably Ferrari doesn't do that. Um, but if you push the button on the dash, what does it say for the tire pressure? It says KPA, right? So I push the button. My wife says, hey, tire's low. I push the button. It says kilopascals. And I'm like, oh. I don't know. Uh, it's supposed to be 200, I think. I don't know. Um, but then I think, geez, what would that be in PSI? Because that I can, oh, 30, that's okay. 40, you know, car tires are like 35 to 45, kind of somewhere in there nowadays. And I'm like, oh, I can relate to that. You know, that's what I grew up on, PSIs. That's what the little gauge tells me, PSI. You know, I checked the motorcycle tire, it says PSI. I don't, pr I don't pick kilopascals because I have no idea, right? But we can change them. So I do know. So I get my wife actually while we're driving. She's like, uh, you know, I, I push the button that says kilopascals, and I say, okay, grab your calculator. Tell me how many PSI that is. So I tell her the numbers to put in there. She does it. No, I'm serious. I have done this before. And she calculates it. Don't look at me like that. It's true. I like to know this stuff. And, and, I, and she tells me how many PSI. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we're good. We're gold. And then I know what some of you guys, the light will come on. You don't want to wait till the light comes on. It might be too late. Eh? All right. Gases, by the way, when do they exert pressure? Well, when gas particles collide with each other or objects in their path. So when we think about gases, we think about collisions. That gives us pressure. Hey, look. There. That's going to exert a pressure when a gas molecule hits the side of the container. When it hits the side of the tire, it's going to exert a pressure. When they bump into each other, boom, right, exerts a pressure. That's all those things are going to exert pressure, collisions between each other molecules, between sides of the, their container. That's what pressure is. We can measure that, okay? In, in fact, you can too. You get, a, get a gauge, put it on your car tire, put it on your bicycle tire. You can measure how many collisions there is. In a, for, in a way of pressure, right? What we need to be able to do, and this is, a, this is one of the parts of this unit, absolutely, we need to be able to convert between these different units, 
kilopascals, PSI, millimeters of mercury, ATM. These are all common units that we will talk about in this unit here. And they're all listed for you here. Okay? Um, we all want to convert them. Well, the units that we use are what we call standard pressure. So uh, one atmosphere is the same as this, is the same as this. They're all the same things. And I'm going to give you a list here right away here. Standard pressure, so atmospheric pressure, basically standard pressure, is determined to be the following. One atmosphere, 760 millimeters of mercury, 101.325 pascals, 101.325 kilopascals, 1.01325 bar, and 14.7 psi. What we're doing here is telling you, hey, this is important here. All these are the same thing. Okay? Everything is the same here. What I've done is I've changed the units. It's like one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules, right? Same thing, but in different units. That's what these all are. The exact same thing, they represent exactly the same thing, one atmospheric pressure in different units, okay? So once again, that one atmosphere of pressure is equivalent to saying, I say one atmosphere, Simon says 760 millimeters of mercury. I'd say, okay. And then um, Colin's going to say, uh, no, actually, I want to say 101,325 pascals. I'd say, sure, same thing. And then, of course, somebody else would say 101.325 kilopascals. Same thing. Okay, all these things are equal to each other in different units. 1.01325 bar. Okay, we don't use that one a whole lot, but we will use it, so don't forget about that one. Okay, and 14.7 psi. All those are exactly the same thing. So when it times comes time for conversions, we say, hey, how could I change 75 kilopascals into ATM? What would I do? How would I do that? And I'd say, well, you know what, the first thing you should do is this. And this is always good for these. If you do this, you'll never go wrong, I promise you. Okay? If I want to change 75 kilopascals into ATM first, don't worry about these ones. This is, my first, this is really three questions into one here. If I want to change 75 kilopascals into ATM, how am I going to do that? And what I'd say is, focus on what is the conversion that you're looking at here. Don't look at this number for right now. Okay, I, I'm... I can do that because I can just erase it. Don't look at the number. What are you trying? What are the units that you need to use in conversion here? You need to change kilopascals into ATM, right? So I say, hey, do I know what those two are equivalent to? I look up here and I say, hey, look, one atmosphere is the same as this and this and this and this and this. But more specifically, one atmosphere is the same as that, yes? Because I'm trying to convert. Eight, uh, kilopascals into ATM. So I pick out those two particular numbers in this case because I'm doing the KPA to ATM thing. And I say, those two are the same. I should be able to say that one atmosphere is the same as 101.325 kilopascals. Those are the same thing in different units. Like one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules. Right? Right? So I look at the units first, right? What am I trying to convert? What is that conversion? It's one atmosphere is the same as 101.325 kilopascals. Then, and only then, do I go back and say, okay, if I have 75 kilopascals, first of all, where should I put that? The top or the bottom? Top or bottom? We talked about Ferraris today, guys. Top or bottom? Bottom. 75 kilopascals, right? We want to keep them the same. Kilopascals, kilopascals. ATM, ATM, right? So if I'm converting 75 kilopascals into ATM, what's the equivalent ATM? Okay. Cross multiplying solve, right? Or whatever you want to do to solve that. Okay? So 101.325 times x, 75 times 1. Ultimately, what do I need to do here? Well, I need to take 75 divided by 101.325. Yes? And when you do that, you will get 0 0.74 something, 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 something. 
Okay. And don't forget what units you're talking about here. What, what was the purpose of doing this? Well, I wanted to change 75 kPa into equivalent number for ATM. So there should be ATMs here. Yes. Final answer, two significant digits, because the zero on the front doesn't count, because I have two here. Okay. 752.742. Yes. And you will just do that repeatedly today. Okay. We're going to go do one more here, actually maybe two more, but that's basically what you have to do. Okay. We'll talk a little bit more about this tomorrow. We are kind of running a little bit short on time here, but um, we still have a few more examples we can do. Okay. Is that good? Any questions? So you want to focus on the units that you're trying to convert first. Don't worry about the number. The number will come later. Okay. Look at the next one here. Let's convert, right here it says here guys, 75 kPa, let's convert that to PSI now. Okay. Let's convert 75 kPa into PSI. So once again, are we good with that one? Okay. How am I going to get kPa into PSI? The first thing I think of, geez, uh, I need to know the conversion. What, what are those two numbers that are equivalent to? By the way, hey, listen, all these numbers are on the back of your periodic table. Yes? Okay, and they're also in the notes, but they're all in the back of the periodic table. They're all there for you. So all you have to do is go to the back of the periodic table and say, okay, KPA, PSI. What are the two numbers that are equivalent to each other? And I say 101.325 KPA is the same as, turns out, 14.7 PSI. Okay, I got that from that big long list or back of the periodic table. Those two numbers are the same thing. Then I say, okay, I want to change 75 kPa into PSI, so 75 should go here, yes, and PSI down there, and I'm going to cross multiply and solve again. And you might say, well, but didn't we have the number on the other spot last time? Well, it depends, right? We need to compare them, kPa to kPa, PSI to PSI. Some of you are saying, why is the x at the bottom? Well, hey, look, does this really matter? Right. Can I write them like that? Is that okay? Sure. Doesn't matter. Where's 75 going to go in this case? Top or bottom? Bottom, right? We cross multiply and solve, right? Uh, you do the same with the top one. Guess what? You'll get the same answer. Okay? Because you're doing the same stuff. As long as you keep KPA, KPA, PSI, PSI the same, you're fine. Cross multiply and solve here. 101.325 times x is 14.7 and 75. How do I get x? Well, you're going to multiply 14.7 and 75 and divide it by 101.325. And when you do that, you have now changed KPA to PSI. And that works out to be. Um, is, if I'm not mistaken, 10.88 PSI. And then you got to say, well, what about significant digits? Well, 10.88, two significant digits, so I need to round this to 11 PSI. Final answer. Okay? Good? Yes? We'll do one more. Okay? The last one, if you go back to that original question, was 75 feet. KPA into millimeters of mercury is the last one we need to do. So, by the way, of course, you're not going to do this three times in a question, obviously. We're just getting your practice here. That's all we're doing. So, if I want to do 75 KPA into millimeters of mercury, once again, okay, you're going to look up, first of all, don't worry about 75. Forget that, okay? 101.325 KPA is 760 millimeters of mercury. I got that from the periodic table. Okay, back of it. Those two numbers are the same thing. I put 75 in there now, up here, and I solve for that. I cross multiply and solve. And I'll let you uh, go right away here, guys. But I'm just going to tell you the answer here is 562 point something millimeters of mercury. 
but don't forget two significant digits, so we need scientific notation, right? So 5.6 times 10 to the 2 millimeters of mercury should be your final answer for that. So if you want to just double check that, uh, that's fine, okay? Now listen, uh, 